What's going on YouTube? This is NecroStevo and we're back with more live narrated battles for the Generation Showdown. Now in the last video we had three victories, so hopefully we can keep that streak going today. Um, you know, I was just really surprised with uh, some of the things I saw overall. I feel like I was able to predict my way through the first three matches relatively easily. So as we, um, number one, we're battling at a different time of day. Yesterday I was battling at 2 in the morning. This time I'm battling at uh, 1.30 in the afternoon. Uh, so my first opponent is going to be from Mexico with a 14.69 rating. And he has a pretty interesting team. Props for bringing Venusaur, of course. Uh, he has four potential Mega Pokemon with Galay, Metagross, Sharpedo, and Venusaur. Dragalge with no item, and of course the Electivire. So, um, I'm not going to sense a problem from leading off with uh, Mega Rayquaza, who can hit everything here super effectively in some way. Um, alongside, alongside, let's do alongside. Yeah, I don't see any reason to not lead Mega Rayquaza Eveltal again. Um, let's see. That's kind of my dedicated lead setup, if just if nothing else would work with necessarily. So Mega Rayquaza and Eveltal. Uh, Heatran can deal with several of these Pokemon, but then it has to worry about Gallade and to a lesser extent Earthquakes from those two. Uh, Whimsicott provides nice team support, but I don't like Aroma Tise as long as Dragalge and Metagross are centered around. So we're just gonna go Heatran each slash. Just because he doesn't have, really have anything for me to hit with Moonblast from either of my fairy types there. I mean he has the uh, he has the Sharpedo, which wouldn't like a Moonblast. That thing not only gets poison fang, so no sense in risking that scenario there. Um, so I'm just gonna start off with Evil Tall and Rayquaza. I don't see any reason I should have Mega up here. Um, even if he has the Draco Meteor, he's not going to like an Earthquake slash Sucker Punch from my uh, Evil Tall. So I think that's the only thing I really have to worry about. So we're just gonna go ahead and go for a Sucker Punch from my Evil Tall. Actually, I may be faster, even though I have a minus speed nature. Um, but no, Sucker Punch is still my better play because Dark Pulse would be. Uh, taken a little bit better by Dragalge's higher special defense. So we're going to Sucker Punch to Dragalge, Mega Evolve, and Earthquake. This way, if his uh, Gallade wants to go for the um, Ice Punch, of course, that will not be as effective as well. So uh, I anticipate Ice Punch from Gallade and Draco Meteor from Dragalge. That's what I'm expecting here. Now, I really like the... Uh, oh, Gallade protects, so this is going to be an interesting turn. I really like the Dark Aura for Evil Tall. Um, it allows me to avoid investing in his Office of Stats. As we see there, that did a ton of damage. Uh, and that's an uninvested Sucker Punch. Um, this should be able to take out the Dragalge. Yes, it does. I get a critical hit there. I don't think that that critical hit mattered at all based on how poorly he took the Sucker Punch. Uh, and so now his Gallade is kind of out in the open here. It's interesting that he protected on the first turn. I don't really see Gallade as a threat of any sort. And now I can kind of Earthquake my way through this battle. In addition to Sucker Punching his Pokemon. Um, actually, we're just going to do Oblivion, we Oblivion Wing, the Gallade. And since he's probably going to protect with Sharpedo, we're just going to drag a Claw the Sharpedo. Because uh, I don't really have any reason not to. Sharpedo used Protect this time. Fine with me. And let's see what the Gallade does. The Galay goes for close combat onto probably the Evil Tall, which is not going to really do. Whoa, that did a lot of damage. Wow, I'm very surprised at that damage. Unfortunately for him, I'm going to get almost all the HP back with Oblivion Wing. And um, if he has, doesn't have a Sash, yeah, he's dead. So, that was actually a really good play on his part with what he's working with. Just when your uh, opposition has the opportunity to bring Uber Pokemon. It's really hard to keep up with them unless you build things basically to counter team the Uber competition. Uh, so Venusaur is going to come out here. He still has a Mega Ball, so Venusaur might be a possible Mega Pokemon for him. We're just going to Oblivion Wing once again on the Venusaur just in case he does Mega Ball. 
and then Sharpedo may have Ice Fang, but I don't really have any reason to not Dragon Claw it. Um, so let's see what's going to happen here. Okay, so we do see Mega Venusaur, finally. Uh, one Mega from my opponent here. I'd be interested to know what item that Delayed was running that. Close Combat did a lot of damage. Sharpedo's going to go for Ice Fang. Not Mega Evolving without the Strong Jaw, though. That's not going to do very much. Uh, maybe he'll get the flinch. No, he did not get the flinch, so Sharpedo should die here for sure. And then we get to hit Venusaur with an Oblivion Wing, um, which actually may not kill it just because Venusaur is so darn bulky. Um, and of course, I only have eight special attack investments, so it does not KO it. So Venusaur showing his prowess there. He's gonna go for Sleep Powder. Probably I would, I would expect a Sleep Powder here. Leap Seed, okay. He decides to hit e tall with it, which does make more sense as he probably figured out that I'm a much more bulky build. Um, but that's not going to help him out too much. Uh, at this range, I can definitely Earthquake slash Oblivion Wing it to break any possible subs or anything that he wants to go for. So this battle is all but wrapped up. Um, but I did enjoy the match. Definitely. It was uh, unexpected to see Galay do that much with close combat. And I get a critical hit with Dragon Claw. I don't think that that mattered because I was about to Oblivion Wing. Kind of just sped things up. So that battle is in the books. That was a really quick one to start things off there. Not, I guess that was about a, a five minute match there. So I don't need to save that battle. And Evil Tall Rayquaza, just a great pairing. Uh, I was talking to Guy a lot when we were thinking of combinations to not only counter Evil Tall, I mean Mega Rayquaza, but also things just to pair Mega Rayquaza up with. And just the number of things that benefit amazingly from Delta Stream is ridiculous. For example, Thunderous and Zapdos, after you get rid of their flying type weaknesses, they have no weaknesses. They, they are essentially Electros because they're flying um, electric types. They have that ability to dodge any ground type moves without any of their flying type weaknesses, which is bizarre if nothing else. Uh, so here we have another team without any Ubers on it, possible Mega Charizard or Mega Tyranitar. Um, Noivern might have Boom Burst. Um, Weezing, I can see supporting maybe or will o -Wisp action there. Malamar, I'm not really sure what to expect from it. A doubles environment, maybe Trick Room alongside the Tyranitar. Superior is also an interesting option, but with Leaf Storm Superior, Contrary Superior, excuse me, um, that's definitely something that we might expect. Now, here I have no reason to, uh, once again, not just lead up with Evel Tall. And my Rayquaza. However, since he has, um, he has three Pokemon there that really don't like Moonblast, so I really like bringing Whimsicott for support here. I could do Whimsicott and, or rather, Aromatisse, because he does have Weezing. Aromatisse could possibly live a poison move from the Weezing. Um, but Whimsicott would be really, really nice just to lower the attack. Of some of these Pokemon, although I might be raising the attack of the. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and go. Uh, we're gonna go for Heatran and Aegis Slash again, just because I don't have very many Pokemon that I want to hit with Moonblast here. Alrighty, so we're gonna start off with the the same lead. This is just such a. I I like it when you are practicing with the team and you just find out what your safe leads are. Uh, and this applies in this situation, or if you're doing VGC, it's good to know the pair-ups that all your Pokemon might have between all the teammates. And then that way, you can just really figure out the best way to uh, lead off a battle if you're unsure with what to lead with. Now here he does end up bringing Weezing. I'm happy I didn't bring any of my fairies, because Weezing would have been annoying for that. I do have to worry about Burn here. Evel Taw is not as worried about Burn. I lose the power of Sucker Punch, but Sucker Punch wasn't really great against his team anyway as long as I have Oblivion Wing and Dark Pulse, and if I need to use physical moves, I can hit Foul Play. But right here, I'm expecting him to set up a Trick Room with Malamar and then burn with Weezing. Um, Weezing also has the ability to Destiny Bond and or uh, Memento. So he has a couple of interesting options for doubles. I'm just going to Dark Pulse the Weezing, and we are going to Mega Evolve and um, Dragon Claw, the Malamar. 
I need to see what he's going to go for here before I try to set up any Swords Dance with my Rayquaza. I, I can't believe I, I I had a Rayquaza that I caught way back in... Um, wow, I caught that Rayquaza, I think back in the original Emerald version. And I sent it all the way up. And that one was Jolly Nature, and it has extreme speed on it, and I taught it Dragon's Ascent. But it had a really low speed, and so I wanted one with higher speed. And I got one with higher speed by trading on the GTS. But unfortunately, um, I forgot to put uh, extreme speed on it. So he does get a critical hit with that um, superpower, but that really doesn't do anything. There is the Destiny Bond from Weezing, as I expected. Uh, so that means I'm going to leave Weezing alone for a turn. I'm going to go for the special type move with my Eveltal and get a Swords Dance up with my Rayquaza. Whenever your opponent uses Destiny Bond, it's just kind of better to leave that Pokemon alone for a turn, because um, most likely they will Destiny Bond again. After that second turn, in my experience at least, players are a lot more likely to switch the type of move that they are going for. So we're just going to go for Oblivion Wing on the Malamar and Swords Dance with the Mega Rayquaza here. So there's the Swords Dance. Let's see, he did not go for Trick Room. I'm not really sure what he expects to do with Malamar. Uh, Malamar is a really weird speed where it's, it's not necessarily great in Trick Room, but it, it's a good pivot, it's a good middle point, because it can be faster than some things outside of Trick Room, or slower than things in Trick Room if you need it to be. But he's very, very specially bulky. That Oblivion Wing did not do very much at all. Uh, he's just going to go for another superpower. This time he has a plus one attack stat. He got another critical hit. So Malamar definitely is is doing his best over there. Weezing goes for Toxic. This is actually pretty good, because I'm going to get my Lumberry activation and I can just KO the Weezing now that the Destiny Bond effects are no longer in play. And that's what makes Mega Rayquaza so good. On top of all of its overwhelming stats and the uh, Delta Stream getting one of the weaknesses, it gets to hold an item. Um, that's, that's just crazy. A lot of people opt for Life Orb, but since I'm using Swords Dance, I like to forego Life Orb and have protection from status effects. Um, so right here, let's just Oblivion Wing the Weezing. And we're going to, we're going to double up into Weezing actually, just in case uh, I don't kill it with the Oblivion Wing. I should, but you know, just in case. Alrighty, so I am going to be able to kill it with a Dragon Claw easily. I get a critical hit. This is just spectacular this time. Um, and I'm going to get some of my HP back with Eveltal. I don't see Malamar being a problem, even if somehow he takes out my Eveltal, which he barely lives, that Oblivion Wing. Uh, I just have so many Pokemon in the back that can handle his Pokemon, so he might actually be banded based on the damage that he's doing, because I'm a very defensive Eveltal, but I don't know. It's kind of hard to say what item he has. So Tyranitar is his next Pokemon. This is interesting. He's not going to be able to get is uh, Sandstream going, which is nice, because that means my special moves will be doing more. And now I can hit both of his Pokemon with a Earthquake. Um, I'll take out the Malamar, and that should kill the Tyranitar too, even though it's a spread move. So let's see if the Tyranitar is able to hold on through this Earthquake here, because it's definitely going to KO Malamar. And it does not hold on, unfortunately, for Tyranitar, so that was a plus two Earthquake. I'm okay with that. I really wanted to run Earthquake on Rayquaza just for the coverage on the Steel types that it would probably end up facing. Um, uh, I guess Extreme Speed would be more useful overall, but you know, my mistake, we gotta play with it now. So now Charizard comes out. We just get to Sucker Punch the Charizard at this point, and then also hit it with a Dragon Claw, and that should be the end of this match. Even if he Mega Evolves, it's not going to help him out very much. He actually evolves into um, Charizard X, and I went for Dragon Claw, so that's definitely going to seal that out, unfortunately for him. And even in the idea that um, Mega Charizard X has higher physical attack, that Sucker Punch did a good amount, of, I mean physical defense, that Sucker Punch did a really good amount of damage. So I get another critical hit, definitely not needed with him being weak to it and me being a plus two. So that battle is over. We are trucking along at a pretty good pace today. I don't know if it's going to actually let me do 20 matches today because I, I didn't get home from work until after 1am last night. So, um, 
I don't need to save that. Good, God, good job, team. Um, but since I have to be at work now in about two hours, I just wanted to get in at least five battles on this video. Uh, and then I'll try to do some more tonight. Hopefully I get home from work tonight early enough so that I can keep battling. But if I don't, no big deal. Um, what is my rating at? We are now at 1574. So this person is also from Alabama. That's the first time I think I've faced someone also from Alabama in any type of Wi-Fi competition. So we have Mega Kagenshkan, Reninja, Primal Kyogre, probably Mewtwo X looking at that team. It's very specially based. Um, Togekiss, probably Follow Me variant, and uh, the Kingdra. Now here, Edith Slash is really, really nice because he just blocks so many things that these Pokemon want to go for. Um, of course, Mega Rayquaza is a given, but I think he's going to start off with Kyogre and either Kangaskhan or Kyogre and the um, Mewtwo. I think he'll also be bringing the Greninja just because it's so fast and gets good coverage. And also, he could also start out with uh, Mewtwo slash Kangaskhan and the Togekiss just for Fall Me shenanigans. So, what we're going to do is, I think, well, I don't want to bring out two Pokemon week to Togekiss, so we're going to go Mega Rayquaza and Aegislash out first. That way, if he starts off with Origin Pulse, I can Wide Guard and all that good stuff. And then we'll have, he has too many water types for me to bother with Heatran. And so we're going to go with Eveltal and Whimsicott just to resist some of those water moves he might be throwing around. Um, and I can also Moonblast two of his Pokemon very nicely. Um, also, I'll be able to lower the attack stat of the Mega Mewtwo X. I really think that's going to be Mega Mewtwo X just looking at his team. His name is Alpha Arroyas. That's interesting. So we're going to start out with the Aegis Slash and the Mega Rayquaza. And he does start out with Kangaskhan and Mewtwo, so he's probably just going to fake out my Mega Rayquaza, which is fine. Um, and I don't really care if he fakes me out here. I imagine he's going to fake out an Ice Beam. So actually, in that case, it's probably better to go ahead and switch out into... Well, if he Ice Beams, then I don't want to switch into Whimsicott. I, can, I know I can live at least one, that's the thing. Uh, he also might not fake out expecting me to have extreme speed, so... At least I don't have to worry about Wide Guard this turn. That's a nice thing to not have to worry about. So we're going to Mega Evolve and just go for the um, Dragon's Ascent on the Mewtwo. I expect Rayquaza to get faked out here. And then also we're just going to go for the Shadow Ball on the Mewtwo as well. Um, yeah, that's what we're going to go for. So let's see how this goes. I Mega Evolve first, interestingly. Uh, Jolly Rayquaza hopefully coming through once again. I really like how after Pokemon Mega Evolve they have uh, custom animation. So the Delta Stream goes, now the Ice Beam won't be able to KO me. Um, he does fake out, he's going to hit the Rayquaza. Oh, he decided to go for the Scrappy Fake Out. Interesting. He just goes for Ice Beam. That's not going to KO, hopefully. Unless he has some uh, Ice Gym shenanigans. Oh gosh, he definitely KO'd. Wow. I definitely thought I had enough HP on the Rayquaza to survive the Ice Beam. But I do not. So that is just a Life Orb Mewtwo. Interesting. That's definitely some power there. But I am going to be able to hit Mewtwo with a Shadow Ball here. Which is really, really nice. Oh wait, no, he faked me out. That's right. So when that's the case... Um, Evel Tall is definitely my next best play. And, because I can sucker punch the Mewtwo. And, uh, I hopefully won't have to deal with it too, too much here. So we're going to sucker punch Mewtwo. And we're just going to... He also could go ahead and use Shadow Ball on my E to Slash. Um, he's probably expecting me to King Shield here, I would imagine. The King Shield is super duper obvious. So we're going to Sucker Punch the Mewtwo and Flash Cannon on Kangaskhan. That's what we're going to do. So now he's going to Mega Evolve. It's too bad I didn't King Shield that first turn. That would have been nice to cut the Kangaskhan's attack by two. But I didn't think he'd stay in Scrappy with it and all that good stuff. He decides to Sucker Punch 
Oh man, he does go for the Sucker Punch. I did not think he'd do that. That was super ballsy. Oh man. Okay, so I've completely misplayed this battle completely, thinking my opponent would do different plays than he has done. So I am able to take out the Mewtwo. So now it's just down to Mewtwo Whimsicott. I mean, I'm sorry. Eveltal Whimsicott. Um, not looking too great. What's nice here is that I can encore the Mega Kangaskhan into Sucker Punch. Uh, which would be really, really nice to do. He might have Gunk Shot on his Whimsicott, which would just be terrible, honestly. I mean, on his Greninja. Well, I cannot speak the right Pokemon right now for some reason. We're just going to Oblivion Wing the Greninja. And we will also encore the Kangaskhan into that Sucker Punch move. So that way he'll at least be stuck into using it. Uh, and if he tried to attack my Whimsicott this turn, he won't be able to do so. He goes for the Mat Block. Okay, that's a little annoying. But at least now he's fighting, uh, fighting type. And I can actually also uh, Encore him into the Mat Block. So I really think he made a bit of a misplay right there. Because now Mat Block won't work. Um, obviously because he has to use it. And Mat Block only works on the first turn that you go for it on. So I am going to go for the Foul Play on the Kangaskhan. And we're going to go for the Encore on the Greninja. Okay, he does switch out Greninja, respecting that. Okay, good. So Kyogre comes out. And that's gonna go ahead and Primal Evolve here. And I'm going to be able to do a fair bit of damage to um, the Kangaskhan with the Foul Play. It has a pretty high attack stat, so. Primordial C sucks right now because I really don't have the ability to take these hits. Um, try to go for the Encore there and it doesn't work. Sucker Punch isn't really going to do anything to Eveltal, which is nice. I definitely like not taking very much damage. Um, so Foul Play, that should hurt a good bit. Yes, it does. That's a 2 hit KO. Perfect. So now Eveltal basically has to hope that he can limb an attack from the Kyogre. Going for the Oblivion Wing onto it, and I'm just going to Helping Hand that Oblivion Wing there. And that should do a fair bit of damage. He's going to switch out the Kangaskhan back into Greninja. I'm okay with that. I don't care about Greninja right now. The Kyogre is a much bigger threat. And unfortunately, Charm doesn't help me out too much here. So we're just going to Helping Hand. He's probably just going to go for an Ice Beam, honestly. Um, oh, I'm faster than the Kyogre somehow. That's unexpected. So this should do about half, I hope. Not even half. Good grief, that thing is bulky. It might even have a rest or uh, sleep talk or some of that annoying stuff. He just goes for thunder. That's not going to KO, but it's going to hurt a lot. Um, Evelto actually took that a lot better than I expected him to. And there's another incoming map block. So in that situation, I can try to flinch the Kyogre as well, but I really need to get my HP back if I want to live another move. Um, so we're going to try for another Oblivion Wing. And I know he's going to go for... Hmm, he's going to go for the Thunder again, obviously. So... Yeah, there's not much I can do here, unfortunately. Because Matt Block is going to stop him from stop my attacks from working. So I could just go for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's not much I can do. I'll just charm the Greninja in case it uh, has physical attacks. That's the only thing I can think of to do right now. That's going to lower Greninja's attack in case he has Gunk Shot or something, or Low Kick, I guess. Um, the map block is going to block my move, unfortunately. And then we have another thunder attack. Hopefully this doesn't KO. I'm looking at min max damage there. And it does. So yeah, this battle's over, unfortunately. Yeah, I really misplayed that battle. I could have just played safe with Eve to Slash and gotten the um, minus two, but I really did not expect him to just attack into me the way he did. So. He's probably just going to go for an Ice Beam here. Yep. Uh, I can hit him back with a Moon Blast. I don't expect to live the Ice Beam, honestly, because I'm not that bulky at all. So that's going to be my first loss, which is not a bad loss at all. I just got to remember not to play so uh, overly offensive. 
I guess, and I could have switched out on the first turn uh, with my Rayquaza, but I did not think that the Ice Beam would kill from the Mewtwo. Granted, I thought it would be a Mewtwo X, so that was my own overprediction right there. I'm also seeing a lot of people running Protect on their Rayquaza just to deal with any of those possible shenanigans. Um, but you know, it's kind of neither here nor there. We're at 25 minutes in this recording. Not bad, not bad at all. If my voice sounds a little bit creaky, I'm, I've been basically sick for a little bit over two weeks now. So that's always fun. But at least you know I have a voice to work with right now. So we're going to have some Mega Blaziken maybe, Mega Salamence shenanigans. Um, Prankster, Murkrow, and Doubles. Highly annoying. So let's just start off with... Um, yeah, we're still just going to start off with Yveltal and Mega Rayquaza. And then right here, besides the Blaziken, Heatran kind of walls most of these Pokemon. I guess Salamence could have Earthquake. So we're going to go ahead and bring Heatran. And... Um, Heatran and... Yeah, he trained and he just slash again. I have no reason not to, really. Because, well, actually, it'd be nice to have Moonblast for Murkrow annoying shenanigans. So, he trained Aromatisse, I think, is a better way to go. So, yeah, we're going to go with that. That's the first battle I've used Aromatisse in, so we'll see if it actually comes out. In practice, having Aromatisse alongside Eveltal has been really, really useful just because I can heal pulse up Eveltal. That actually would have been pretty useful in the last match. Um, so he's going to start off with whom? Whom is the question indeed? Pachirisu and Salamence. So we're going to see some annoying follow me shenanigans. Uh, and Timonate's going to lower the attack of my Rayquaza, of course. And that actually might be a Scar Salamence if it's not a Mega one. So I don't really want to stay in here. It did lower the power of my Sucker Punch with the Intimidate. Not too worried about that, though. I am worried about the electric type moves from Pachirisu. So we're just gonna go straight for the Dark Pulse on Pachirisu because I'm expecting it to use Follow Me anyway. And we're gonna switch out um, the Rayquaza for my Aromatisse. So we get to go right into it in this battle. I don't, I just need, I just realized I don't know if it's Aromatisse or Aromatisse. So it is a Mega Salamence. That's unfortunate. I was hoping it was just a Scarf one. Uh, but that is okay. I don't think he can KO me with anything that he goes for. He does go for Follow Me, so that was predicted. So I'm just going to be able to hit it with a, a nice Dark Pulse there. He goes for Dragon Dance. Interesting. So that is pretty unfortunate, actually. I am going to need to Sucker Punch that thing on the next turn. I don't know if he's expecting me to have Sucker Punch or not. I wish I got to Foul Play it. While well, it is a bulky Pachirisu. Probably max HP, max special defense, I'd imagine. Um, I'm going to go for a Trick Room here, just on the off chance that he doesn't KO my Aromatisse. Uh, let's see, if he goes for a Double Edge now, yeah, that'll definitely kill. So we're going to go for... I need to get some damage off on the Salamence. So yeah, let's go ahead and go for... Well, I'm actually, I'm going to Foul Play the Salamence and go for Trick Room. That way, I get to do something as opposed to not getting anything off. Um, he's probably just going to, oh, he went for head, but I've not seen that on a Salamence before. Ow, it did a lot of damage. Um, he just goes for a nuzzle. Okay, so this is gonna work out pretty well, even though I get paralyzed here, hopefully he doesn't flinch. Okay, I get the foul play off on the Salamence, that's great, he has such a high attack status, that's gonna really hurt. Almost KOing him, and I get up my Trick Room. Uh, so this is great, he's probably just going to um, follow me with Pachirisu or Protect. Uh, and so from this range, I can definitely just go for Oblivion Wing. No, wait, I need to keep going for Dark Pulse, actually. Dark Pulse will try to hit the Salamence. I'm just going to double target the Salamence here with the Dark Pulse and the Moon Blast. Um, that way, if he does follow me, then the Dark Pulse and the Moon Blast will hit the Pachirisu. So, um, Moon Blast and the Dark Pulse actually should be enough to clean Pachirisu out. I really like, I, I'm happy I invested so much in uh, Aromatisse's special attack. 
whereas I focus more on Wimsicott's bulk because I really wanted it to be taking water type moves and that type of stuff. So, able to take it out, and he's probably gonna KO me with the Dragon Claw. Oh, he does not! Wow! Bulky Veltal for the win. So this is great as I get to um, finish off the Solomons, and I can even heal pulse my Evil Tall back to full health now, uh, depending on what he brings in next. Uh, who's he gonna go for though is the question. Pachirisu and Mega Salamence. That is a very interesting combination there. So he decides to go for Blaziken. I'm just going to expect to protect from Blaziken right here. And we're going to Sucker Punch the Salamence. Or actually, we're going to Oblivion Wing the Salamence, excuse me. Because um, I'm faster right now. He doesn't have any priority moves. And I will definitely heal Pulse by e Tall because why not? Oh no, I got paralyzed. Oh well. Well, hopefully I do take out Salamence here. I'm expecting this to at least. And that's gonna do a nice hunk of damage taking out the Salamence. I get a little bit of HP back. He did not protect. So I wonder what he went for. Maybe a Swords Dance here? Um, Brave Bird, okay. That's interesting. I don't know. I, don't, I never really understand why people run Brave Bird on uh, Blaziken. It's not Stab. And it doesn't really offer any particular coverage that's not covered by fire and fighting. Um, I guess you can hit other fighting types super effective if that's something you're really interested in. Uh, but we're definitely going to go out into Heatran here. That way, um, I know I'm definitely slower right now. I still have uh, two turns of Trick Room left. Yeah, I believe. He has Swallow left in the back. So, um, he can't go for Earthquake here. And I still have Mega Rayquaza left for when the Trick Room wears off. And so we're definitely just going to go for a safe uh, Flash Cannon on the Swallow. And also a nice Moon Blast on the Blaziken. So, okay, so he's going to protect with the Blaziken. I'm just going to be able to hit Swallow. I'm surprised he didn't protect with Swallow. There it is, okay. Uh, all right, Blaziken is faster because of speed boost. And so this is nice because I get to save my Protect now to see what he goes for. Um, and he gets another speed boost. If he has the rock type move, that could be really annoying for my Mega Rayquaza. Um, so this is the last turn of my Trick Room. We are just going to go for Flash Cannon on the Swallow. Moon Blast on the Blaziken. And we'll see how this turn goes. So here's the Moon Blast. Fortunately, I don't get paralyzed. That would have been really interesting if I didn't get paralyzed when I was trying to heal Pulse my Evil Tall, because I do not think that uh, Brave Bird would have KO'd it at all. And I almost kill the Swellow with a single Flash Cannon, which is great. He goes for Facade, probably on Aromatisse. Does not KO it. I really like that he targeted Aromatisse, because now um, I still have my Balloon for one thing. He goes for High Jump Kick on... Well, that was ballsy. I could have protected. Um, so that's okay, my Trick Room's gonna go down now, and he's probably gonna die to burn, I think, on the Swallow. Um, and now he, I think he has to make a choice on whom he wants to attack. Uh, and in this case, I'm just going to Mega Evolve, protect with Aromatisi, and go for Earthquake, because I have no reason not to do that. I have no reason not to do that. I have no reason to go for another play, rather. Um, Nice safe place for the win. So Mega Evolve, go for the Earthquake. Oh wait, no, my Aromatisse might get paralyzed. So we're gonna Mega Evolve and go for the Dragon Claw rather. And we'll try to protect with Aromatisse, we'll try. All right, so here comes the Mega Evolution. And interesting that he was able to take out so many of my Pokemon even though he's not using any uh, Ubers really. So there's a Delta Stream in case he goes for the rock type move. I guess that's the only thing I'm expecting from him. I do get the protect off, which is nice. Um, he's gonna go for high jump kick onto the Mega Rayquaza. And that does not do very much at all. So this is gonna be a snack wrap. And that's the battle, fantastic. So interesting plays there. Just running high jump kick in general and doubles. Protect is really prevalent, prevalent excuse me. Kind of ballsy. You don't see a lot of people doing that. Um, but yeah, that was a pretty good match, actually. It came down to my last two Pokemon. 
happy that I decided to go ahead and bring Aroma Tisa because the Trick Room definitely came in handy there. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and stop this video right here. I hope you guys have a great day and I'll talk to you later. Look forward to part three soon. Bye bye now guys.